No one tried to put the fire out in the kindergarten in Yurchenkova. Its young families are long gone. Frontline villages are emptying because last year's hope of driving the Russians out is now a grim struggle to stop them moving deeper into Ukraine. Vika Pizna, a psychologist from the local relief group, is evacuating the last elderly residents. Leaving home after 40 years hurts my soul, said Lyubov, but stay and the shelling might kill her. The couple next on Vika's list preferred to risk it. You'll be well looked after, she said, and it's all free. Thank you, said Emma, but we won't go. Vika tried again. We're evacuating people because there's a real crisis. It's very dangerous. There's going to be more shelling. Emma stayed with her husband. Ukrainian composure under fire is impressive, but that cannot obscure real challenges from a resurgent Russia. Vika had better luck at the next house. Leaving home will only be temporary if Ukraine weathers the dangerous summer ahead. All these personal tragedies, like Valentina leaving her home, it all adds up to Ukraine's massive national trauma at a time because of Russian military pressure close to here and Ukraine's own relative military weakness that the people here are feeling under more pressure than at any time since the months after the full-scale invasion more than two years ago. And here in Kharkiv, they can feel it. The city's hit most days by missiles and guided bombs made in Russian factories retooled for a long war. Ukraine is short of weapons and troops. This raid destroyed a print factory. Kharkiv is vulnerable, effectively defenseless against Russian missile strikes. It takes 40 seconds for the missiles to get here. Only the US Patriot system could destroy them, and we don't have Patriots. The destruction is a practical consequence of shortfalls and delays in military aid, especially a $60 billion package that was held up for months in the US Congress. Ukraine needs reliable supplies if it's to stop Russia. The Ukrainians weren't able to intercept the missiles that did this, and they were not able to attack the Russian drone that was patrolling in the skies above here before, during, and after. The Ukrainians are having to make some very hard choices about what they can defend. And they're fighting an enemy that has adapted itself to exploit their weaknesses. Ukrainians are feeling the pain inflicted by the resilience of Russian forces who've learned from their mistakes. Kharkiv's paramedics pulled out another body. The strain is showing, not just among workers who've seen their colleagues killed, but right across the country. Yet another missile warning came in. What did he say? It felt close to panic. Constant attacks over years now, not months, erode morale. Ukraine is not defeated, but it will not stop the Russians without more troops, better defenses, and more weapons from its allies. At the weekend, Russia destroyed a crowded DIY superstore in Kharkiv, killing at least 18 people. Ukraine wants Joe Biden to allow them to hit back at launch sites inside Russia with powerful American weapon systems. We won't give up, said Andriy Kudinov, manager of the shop next door. Look at the beautiful plants people were buying, and no soldiers. Everyone was a civilian. War carries a heavy cost on every side. Dozens of Kharkiv's police officers paid their last respects to their colleague, Andriy Ladeka. He was killed evacuating civilians from a frontline village. Ukrainians are paying a heavy price in blood to stay independent. It is harder now than when Russia launched the full-scale invasion more than two years ago for Ukrainians to persuade their allies to make big sacrifices to support them. <coughs> Air raid alarms continued throughout the service.
Other wars, economic challenges and elections are distracting Europe and America. Ukraine's leaders are trying to get their allies once again to look this way at what's happening here. It is safe to say that President Putin's attention has stayed focused. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Kharkiv.